Have you ever wanted a fun little science project as a kid, as an adult, for school, or just something to do at home? How about growing a tree from a seed? Welcome to Learn From Dad. I'm James. With me again today is Wyatt. Growing a tree is fun. Here's a good example. This is an avocado tree that I grew from an avocado seed. It's March 20th. We're going to take all the acorns that we picked up from last fall and we're going to go through the process of germinating them, transplanting them into small cups, eventually transplanting them outside or giving them away. Now Wyatt, do you remember what these seeds are that we picked up? What kind of trees? No. These are acorns which grow from oak trees. Oak trees and acorns are super simple. Let me give you the really fast crash course on what you need to do to get the right seeds ready for germination. Go out in the fall, pick up a bunch of acorns, bring them home, put them in a bucket of water. The ones that float, throw them out. The ones that sink, keep them. Put them in a bag with a very light, moist paper towel. Put them in your refrigerator for three to four months. They need to go through a dormancy period of cold, most acorns do. Come springtime, maybe the start of March or the middle of March, bring them out and you're ready to start. I use tins that you would bake, say a turkey or other things in that are disposable and I use them year over year. You're gonna need something like paper towels or sometimes I like to use these absorbent pig mats and you need some water and that's it. You can put these seeds into actual potting soil and attempt to grow them directly. But what you'll find is even by doing those techniques I mentioned to when you collected the seeds, you're still gonna have a bunch that do not germinate. Germinating in trays using fake soil, paper towels or pig mats, will help you identify which ones actually germinate and then you can put them into potting soil. Now those paper towels or that pig mat, what it's acting like is moist soil. Keeping that seed around moisture without being fully wet. So we have probably 100 or so acorns that we're gonna try to grow. Now remember in the years past, we use paper towels, mm -hmm. but let's go ahead and just lay those mats down inside of the trays. Okay. <laughs> so now we're gonna take and put our acorns in different trays. If you're picking up random ones, lay them wherever. We have different species that we like to try to grow. So we're going to lay them out in certain quadrants. Do you want to start with your favorite? Yes. yes. Which ones are those? The chinkapin. The chinkapin oak. That's why it's favorite oak tree. I'm going to start with the bur oaks, which have these big, huge acorns. They're my favorite. If you remember, Wyatt, we're just going to spread them out. It doesn't really matter how they're laying. Mm -hmm. We just need to get them spread out. So you can dump them or one. you can place them wherever. Mm, that's the tiny seeds. You can keep these fairly close together because when you cover them with the paper towels, we're just looking for that little teeny tiny sprout to come out if they start to grow. Sounds like ASMR. Sounds like ASMR. The noise. I'll let you take these ones. We couldn't remember what these are called. We call them the bullet acorns. I'll grab the white oaks because we have just a few of those that will fit in my tray. I win for the teeniest acorn way. I really hope that one grows. And these were ones that we picked up that we couldn't remember what they are. They kind of look to me like scarlet oak acorns. Fun fact, if you're not sure what you're picking up, you can use Google Lens to take a picture of it and you'd be surprised at how accurate it is. So the next thing we need to do is put water on them and our upper paper towels, but first, Somebody wants to participate with us, but he doesn't have any thumbs. We're gonna get our under layers wet. I do like to make sure there's a fair amount of moisture. Mm -hmm. Pour that water on that absorbent mat. You can see how that mat is turning a dark gray. Now it's important that there's not standing water because if I had wet feet all day long, my feet would rot just like an acorn might rot. So go ahead and lay several layers of paper towels over the top, Wyatt. Good things your muscles are big for this. He didn't think my joke was funny. You thought it was funny? Yeah. Good. I think Archie laughed. We, I can hear him telepathically every time he's saying anything or talking. It's just a special connection we have. Well, Wyatt likes the spray bottle. You don't need a spray bottle. You can also just take your cup and pour the water and you can start to see those acorns underneath. Let me show you down here 
what they can expect to see. That paper towel is nice and moist. You're just gonna lay over the top and act as soil. Now keep in mind, some of this moisture is gonna dry up. Next, we're gonna take these pans and we're gonna leave them in a warm spot. Sunshine really doesn't matter when the seed is starting to grow. Because remember, this is underneath the soil. So for a seed to grow, you need a certain amount of GDUs or growing degree units for that seed to actually get enough heat plus the moisture to use the energy inside of it to actually germinate. I like to set them in the sun because it helps to accelerate that a little bit. In my house, I have some south facing windows. So I just put a card table. We like to set our trays here so that south sun is gonna come in. How long does it usually take until they start sprouting? It depends on the acorn. Sometimes it will take them seven days, sometimes 14-ish days. Last year, I think we had some that took almost three weeks, so 21 days before they sprouted. Mm -hmm. One to two weeks and we'll start to see something. It's exciting, isn't it? Yes, really, he speaks for the trees. We've got some acorns that have sprouted. It's time to plant them. Let us show you how to do that into cups as one of your options to get them started. Wyatt, can you show them what we were looking for here? Well, we can see on the ends of the acorn, that's where the seedling is starting to crack and the first root is coming out. That's your indicator that this is a good acorn that can be planted. We try to catch them when they're first starting like that and get them into our cups. This one here looks like it probably is starting to crack and will eventually render a sprout, but we always wait to plant them in soil until we see an actual sprout. We like to use just simple red solo cups. We take and we poke two or three holes in the bottom so that excess water can drain. The root will go down and coil a little in the bottom, but it's not excessive. By the time we transplant these, we'll stretch that root out and it's good to go. So Wyatt, how do we plant these in the cup? Kind of an orientation. Uh, flat. Why do you want to do it flat? Because that's the way it's done in nature. Yeah, right. It's just going to lay on the ground. So go ahead and lay it in the cup where the root is in the middle of the cup. It doesn't have to be terribly deep. We're just trying to get that root under some soil. And then Wyatt, go ahead and put some soil over the top of it. We take our cups and set them inside our trays, which is great because as we water those, if we overwater them, the water just runs down into the trays. Now we'll wait for those trees to start growing and then we'll plant them outside. It's April 26th. So give a quick update on our baby trees. We have 14 different ones that have sprouted in seeds and we put them into cups. See, we've got a couple that are almost probably two inches tall at this point. These are maybe four days old. So I think this one was two days old. It usually takes about a week or two after they planted. Wyatt, what was the question that you had asked me about those? How can you tell which one they are? Oh, how can you tell which one they are? So we have different tree species. And right now we can't really tell other than I can kind of see the acorn and remember which one was which. But when we get a whole bunch of different ones, once they grow, we'll look at the leaf structure. And if people don't know the leaf structure, we'll just have them go use Google Lens and take a picture and it'll tell them what it is. The other thing we mentioned is how long do you wait to see if these acorns still sprout? A lot of these won't. We normally wait at least a couple months of keeping them moist. You'd be surprised how one z 2 z will just start sprouting. I just had another one last night and that's probably three or four weeks after this first one sprouted. So it's June 7th, but it's time to plant our tree seedlings. You're right in the way, buddy. <laughs> Sit. You're we just planted an Archie. <laughs> <laughs> We've picked a spot in the lawn where we want a tree. We're gonna make this easy. We're gonna scatter them around our farm as well. I went through and cleared the grass out just a little bit so it would make it easier to dig. Ideally, I probably would have used some Roundup or something else to maybe kill this or cut the sod out, but it'll be good enough because when we put the seedlings in, we're gonna put a little bit of mulch back over the top of it. That grass won't necessarily grow. When we plant our trees, I typically put two or three seedlings in one spot because there's a good chance that one of them's gonna die or one of them's gonna get eaten by an animal. And I wanna make sure that at least one of them survives. And later, if they all three of them do grow, I come back, pick the best one, and I cut the other two off after a couple of years. And then we have one nice tree. I have to pause for a technical correction. There's a cat up in the tree. With these three trees, we'll space them about this far apart. Now we're going to take seed and flip it up. So you can see how that taproot has spun around in a circle. That's the taproot. We're gonna get that taproot kind of down in the hole, hold the tree up, start putting a little bit of dirt in. And it's important to not 
put it too deep. This point right here, it's kind of like the foot of the tree. So you don't want that under soil. I'm just gently kind of holding that up and we'll keep just packing that around. And when we water it, all that soil will get solidified and around those roots. We don't have to be too aggressive with it. That is exactly what we want. The other thing that's good is to add some mulch around them to help keep the soil moist. It will help to keep some other grasses and weeds away from it. Although sometimes that can be a benefit because if other animals like deer can't see these little tree seedlings, they won't eat them. Before we actually water, I'm gonna put the mulch down because when Wyatt pours that water, it will not wash all of our soft soil away. It's important to not have it piled up against the tree like this. So you wanna actually keep it just a little bit away. So we'll add some more later, Wyatt. Let's go ahead and water all three trees. Oh gosh. <laughs> Last thing we need to do is protect our trees from critters. So you can use a small amount of fence to protect them, I've used buckets that I've drilled big holes in before just so deer couldn't reach in and bite them. I actually like to use these cages that come from old chemical totes because in my area I have lots of deer, so it protects them. So let's drop one over the top. Nailed it. Uh, oh. Go! Hurry! Leg. Just fall. Quiet. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. That looks better. I agree. See you soon. I hope you enjoyed growing tree seedlings with us and planting the next generation of trees. Remember, the best tree to plant is the one you did 20 years ago. The next best one is today. Thanks for watching. Stay curious, friends.